Jump! Ah! You want something too? Um, uh, maybe in a minute. That one is the, the pump one, you hear it? That's a pump, yeah. You ready to help me vacuum? Yeah. Okay. Well, today is the day that we are gonna start to handle the decking. We've got some manila folders over yonder, and we're just gonna lay those out to make a template. We will transfer that onto 15, 30 seconds plywood. While that's curing, we'll take care of all this in here. Okay, so our template is laid out on top of our boards. Notice they are running crossways. Uh, it seems like that probably gives me a little bit of strength. And the first thing to make me intensely happy is that one board, that first four feet, is enough to do everything up to the fuel tank. And I knew I was going to have to cut a little bit off the tip right there. Like a moil. Moil. <laughs> moil. Moil. Yeah. I'm all the circumcisions. The, the circum yeah. Yes, I was going to have to cut off some of the tip like a moil. Nip the tip. I'm gonna trace out this top part, mark off on the template exactly what it is that I am still left to cut, and we'll go from there. So we gotta leave a little tab here so that I've got something for this next piece to attach to all the way up at this end so it's not just floating and resting on the foam. I think we are in pretty good shape here. Well, the pieces and parts for the deck have all been cut, and I have started the process of applying the two-part marine epoxy to the underside. important thing to do while I'm waiting for that is to start focusing on running my fuel line. So we should start by talking about the fuel line itself. What we're using here is Shield's 3 8 inch lined fuel hose. We'll start out with our hose clamp, stainless steel, in the direction of flow. Now I don't think we need all that much slack here. Less is more. I'll go ahead and cut that accordingly. And I hate to do this because every foot that I shave off of here is basically $10 thrown away. Pay attention to the fittings. This is a Tahatsu fuel tank. So it's got a specialized connector. There's a small little spring-loaded valve that is in here. And you need components that are going to be compatible with that. All right, that's on. That's on. And take it through to the other side. Now, here is where the, the hose comes through on the other side. And what I'm looking to do is to have this mount up somewhere down here. So that when the motor gets mounted here, I can just reach down and connect directly to it. But again, it's all Tahatsu and proprietary clamps and all that other good stuff. So we got to make sure everything works and fits before we test it to make sure fuel will flow. And these are both female connectors. The, this is my actual hose that came with the motor. And that's not wanting to fit. Uh-oh. Okay. wonder what the issue there is. Why are these different? I went from happy to angry. Skip said, now I feel like kicking his ass. All this stuff has to go back. It can't be used. Um, there are two different female type connectors for Tahatsu. There appears to be one that is the thread in type, and then there's one that has the spur. And the spur type has a different fitting internally than the threaded type. They're not compatible. That would be good to know before I made the trip and spent like fucking 30 bucks on these things. And I probably would have noticed this if I'd been paying attention, but it says it right on the side. I was elected to lead, not to read. There's different part numbers. This part right here is meant to go with uh, part number ending 4674. The part that I picked up is 4666. Could it be Satan? Mark of the Beast. Yeah, because this is for sure one of my favorite things in the world to do. Drive back to a big box store like West Marine for the second time in a day. Oh yeah, it should fit. Okay, cool. I will trust you. Can't nothing ever just be easy. Now, I think I do have a different solution though. If I can find a fitting that works with this, then I can put that connector in that spot where we've been looking and reuse the connector for the other fuel line. 
trips. It's enough to make you spin. I don't know how to cut to this. Like, this is, it's, it's story time with Adam. You just found the marble in the oatmeal. You get to drink from the fire hose. <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. Open wide. <laughs> I just went into West Marine. You can see it right behind me. And see, like, that fuel line that I had, it was still in a package. So, completely under the impression that it had never, ever been used before. We were going to test it, check it out, do all that other good stuff, and the guy at the counter was trying to help me make sure it's functioning. Super nice guy. And uh, I went to squeeze the bulb, and fuel shot right out of that hose that I thought was empty. And sprayed the dude in the face. Damn! <laughs> I felt terrible. Oh, my apologies. Walked him back to the bathroom. He's cool now, but like, he was wearing glasses, thankfully. But holy shit. I didn't know. Get home before any more disasters happen. So we've got this Johnson component in here, which happens to be what matched this hose that I already have. Okay, cool. So that goes all the way on. That is nice and snug. Then we cut off the end from the other hose. This goes to the Tahatsu motor. All this fits and it is 100% functional. Let's go and take a look at the fuel filter. And there you go. We've got some really, really old gas in this tank, but it won't be such a big deal to get all that stuff cleaned out. Now, one thing I also added, because I was thinking about it, I'm like, hey, I've got electricity and sparks and old fuel, and I don't know how much I trust it. I added that vent to the front to make sure that I was getting at least some air circulation. And when all this is painted, you'll barely even be able to see that, but it's there. Moving on from there, and again, in preparation for installing the decking that we've already cut, we have this contraption. Now, I'm not sure if this is a new idea. It's definitely one I don't know. I don't think I've seen this anyplace else, but the general idea behind it is, you know, that old adage, it's not a question of if your boat is going to leak, it's it's a question of when is your boat going to leak and, and how badly is it going to impact you when it happens. I am taking it for granted that water is going to cascade over the sides of the finished areas of the boat. Just watch as I do this and I think you'll get an idea of exactly what I'm going for. Yeah, okay. Let me show you what we got here. We have that bead of marine adhesive that's holding on this half inch piece of PEX. And that half inch piece of PEX is running all along the finished component of the boat, right? So there's some overhang here where it runs down into the unfinished portion of the boat. And there's some overhang here where it runs off into the unfinished portion of the boat. Now the general idea here with the holes drilled at intervals all along is that my boards are gonna come in and they're gonna butt up directly against this, right? And then there's gonna be silicon that runs to seal on this side and silicon that runs on the inside. It'll create a watertight connection between the floor and the wall with the exception of these drainage holes, which are gonna run into this. These holes do not go all the way through. They just go into the tube. So as water collects in here, no matter what happens, the boat rocks back and forth, side to side, does whatever, water is gonna dump into an unfinished portion of the boat. Cool? We're gonna do the same thing on the other side before we install our decking.
All right, so this first deck chunk is in. The way the rivets has gone in has been like hit or miss. Depends on how well I've countered some. But I'm out of rivets for now. I forgot to I forgot to order more that were the longer length. I think I am gonna go one inch on the next set just just to be safe, just to have that extra quarter inch. I'm using the remnants from what I had for when I did the sub floor. We'll figure it out. Well, I think this is my third weekend that I've been working on this phase of the project. All I'm doing is securing wood right to the top of the... It shouldn't be this hard, is what I'm saying. Okay. But we're getting there. We're getting there. I'm not going to give up. Okay. So, everything is decked. There are, there are some spots. I should probably show you what those look like. So we went ahead and we did this routered edge, right? With the flush cut bit. And that does most of what I wanted it to do. But there are spaces, right? So if you remember the sequence that we worked in, the first thing that we did was lay down that bead of silicon, right? And then we went through and we hit it with the flush cut bit, right? But there's still these gaps like this. And even though there's some stuff in there, in that case, there's really, there's not enough. Right? That aluminum, that one eighth inch aluminum, is creating that gap. And these cracks are what need to be filled. We're gonna get in there with some marine adhesive, spackling in there nice and good, give that an opportunity to dry. And while that's going on, we're gonna start sanding the top and getting it ready for sealing with the two part marine epoxy. <laughs> feeling like this is about as good as I'm gonna get it. It is what it is. We're gonna let this soak in overnight, come back tomorrow. It's probably still gonna be tacky. We'll give it a sanding, paint the areas that need to be painted, put the EVA foam on, which is supposed to get here today, and then secure our hatches. And maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to take this thing for a test run. Let's see how well it's gonna hold up. Well, the good news after several days is that everything seems to have cured and I've got my perimeter paint on and it is time to start putting down the decking. What's going on with my beard? But I'm kicking myself right now because <sighs> I threw away my template. Not a big deal. We'll get it done. God, I really don't want this to be crooked. But it's so, it's so gonna be crooked. I'm so gonna fuck this up. It's like the most visible thing on the boat. And I'm, I'm just I'm gonna fuck it up. And hey, what's the big deal? It's only a hundred bucks a freaking sheet. Why are you carrying it? Oh my God. All the struggle bus. You better take yourself on YouTube. It's best. Well, friends and family, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I am struggling mightily with this EVA foam. It's a, it's a, it's an art form unto itself. Whoo! Yeah, so I'm, I'm not 100% convinced that this stuff is gonna stick directly to the resin. I, we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm gluing down a couple spots where things are popping up, but like the seams, the seams are really hard to marry up. It's, it's just hard to make it look good. So much respect to the guys at Tiny Boat for absolutely killing the game when they do theirs. I'm gonna show you how I'm doing the hatch installs on the areas where I do have the foam. I'm not sure if this is the best way 
because I've never done this before, but it is our way. And it's the way that I'm gonna do it because I don't know what else to do. So here we've got our hatch, right? I don't want this to sit above the foam. I want this to be recessed so that it gets secured directly to the wood underneath. So for this, you take your marker, trace your outline. Why don't you take it off? Get yourself a sharp knife. That's one piece of advice that I do remember is to make sure that you're using this style of knife because, man, this thing, this stuff will go through your blades really quickly. All right, all the way down there. All right, cool. So when we put our deck in, one of the issues that I've got, right, is that no matter how cleanly you cut this, there's always going to be these little gaps where you can see the wood. Right in there. Right in there. And I don't care for that. There's a couple ways that I think we can deal with it. We're going to do this, I think, the easiest way, which is to use silicone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run two beads. I'm going to run a bead along this edge and a bead along the inner edge. And hopefully that'll mask everything nicely. The idea is maybe this will get smushed enough that those openings won't be visible. And we got some stainless steel pan head screws. I have no idea how this is going to look in the long run. This may end up being a terrible idea. But again, I don't know any better. And I guess this is how you learn. Trial and error. Got as much of the excess as I can. Clean all this up later. But there you go. I'm just going to do that eight more times. friends and family I think that's going to do it for this particular episode it's been a month in the making I am exhausted I'm still not entirely pleased with the status of the project I mean honestly if I had it to do all over again I just would have done carpet I mean the EDA foam looks cool and all and I'm sure it'll pay some dividends on the feet during the summertime but like it was a genuine hassle to get on there but we'll see how it goes Hopefully none of it comes flying off as I'm driving down the road. I've still got to build that hatch to go over the fuel tank. That's going to be a challenge unto itself. And I've got to mount the trolling motor. I'm expecting my stickers and title to come back from the state of Maryland anytime now. I'm not holding my breath. But as always, you know, I hope you found this entertaining. Please feel free to like and subscribe. Really looking forward to getting this thing on the water. We'll see you on the next one.